All right, everyone, this is a slightly more advanced topic on squatting. And the topic today is hip internal rotation. So this is a, a jargony word. Um, if you don't need to understand in your mind, if you don't need to understand all of the mechanics that are involved in squatting, do not watch this video, okay? This is more me talking to some coaches. We're gonna reason through some, some uh, perspectives on internal rotation of the hip. So basic principles, when I squat down and when I flex, I need adduction, Hip, rot er, hip rotation, hip motion, I need flexion, hip motion, and I need internal rotation, hip motion. Okay, so combining all of those things. That is the major purpose of why we're chasing internal rotation. It allows us to load our muscular structures, our neuromuscular structures, so that we can then explode, so that we can demonstrate strength and power and speed and whatever we're chasing. Um, so, what is normal hip rotation? Normal hip rotation for the population is about 35 degrees. Now, if you've worked with anybody who lifts a lot, that seems insurmountable, that seems unattainable. Uh, I know most people that I measure generally come up around five or 10 degrees. Some come up around negative five degrees. Those people are pretty limited in their hip motion but you'll notice they can still squat. So we have to talk about how do we attain hip internal rotation? Well, there, there is a couple factors. So biggest thing is the position of the hips, the position of the acetabulum. How is that determining how the femurs can rotate? If the acetabulum is oriented forward, uh, generally you're going to see a block in internal rotation and the hip will have more motion letting the knees fall out, letting the feet turn in. And so your squat is gonna be more comfortable with your feet wide and toes turned out. Now, why is that? Well, if we look at the shape of the acetabulum, there's this little notch out in the uh, uh, kind of like anterolateral superior area. And so when I flex the hip, I'm gonna to try to stand up and stay on camera here. When I flex the hip this way, I don't have as much motion, but when I move my hip out and I externally rotate and I abduct, that buys me more room to internally rotate and adduct, okay? So now I can pick my leg up much higher. Remember, if I stay in line, this is about as high as I can go without leaning backward. And then here, I have a lot more motion. So I bet you didn't think you're gonna see that close up of my belt buckle today. <laughs> so um, that, is, that is one of the mechanisms just purely by the shape of the joint that will allow us to achieve more motion. And at, if, I'm, if I'm stiffer in, or let's not go there yet. If I'm more restricted in my internal rotation, moving my feet out allows me to um, make up some ground. Now, generally, if, I'm, if my goal is to squat as deep as I can, like powerlifting, right? So you have to squat pretty deep to get three white lights in powerlifting, but you also need to have a lot of weight so that you, you know, beat your previous weights. So what is the goal here? So most positions, I'm going to say, you need to be out a little bit. You're not gonna do this narrow hip width stance, not, maybe not even shoulder width. Um, so, you know, shoulder to maybe slightly outside shoulder, definitely with like 15 degrees or so of toe out is gonna be m about optimal. You're gonna wanna see if I squat low and I hold there, what position is most comfortable? And so you might have your clients do that, right? You might have them say, I want you to find the right position. And now that is your squat stance. That's what we're gonna pick. All right, what have we talked about? I gotta think for a second. So we, we talked about internal rotation, we talked about position of the hips, determining this. So uh, we talked about position of the femur as well. So now let's go back to the position of the hips one more time. So I can reposition the pelvis so that I have mobility. What I do when I do that is I steal stability, however, and so when you do that, you may be weaker, but if you need the motion, then you need to 
implement this, right? If you're squatting with your back really arched, that may support your spine so that you're limiting the lever of the weight tipping you over and, and you feel stronger. You, you can perform more weight, you can squat more weight. Um, but if it's stealing your motion and you can't hit depth, then it doesn't matter or if you're having hip pain or back pain because you're squatting that way, then it doesn't matter, you can't do it that way. So you're gonna to have to find a slightly more, we would say neutral position where the hips are not overly tilted forward, they're not overly rounded backward, they're somewhere in the middle. And you're gonna find you have pretty good power that way, but there is a lot more shakiness in the squatting and so you'll have to be able to control that. So that's the, the basic premise of the position. If I'm tilted too far one way or the other, I'm gonna steal the motion. I'm not gonna have the hip internal rotation that I need to squat effectively. Uh, and then we talked about if you are limited, which a lot, of, a lot of lifters are limited, how do you find the depth? You pull your knees out a little bit and you reorient so that the position of the hip is allowing for that mobility. Now, third point I want to talk about, muscle stiffness. Uh, we, you know, people in my circle kind of foo-foo stretching and for the most part that's because, or let's rephrase, that is because for the most part I don't see a whole lot of benefit in doing it. You know, when I do do it, it's not always helpful, but Stretching the posterior hip capsule is often something that people do need to do. And the only way you can know is by cueing their reposition and then seeing if that's enough hip internal rotation for them. How do I determine what's enough? Well, I have to ask what are the goals of training? If the goal is to squat deep enough, then you might not need 35 degrees. You might be able to just move your feet out a little bit and then have enough motion with maybe 10 degrees of internal rotation to support yourself. If the goal is to become a more functioning human being who isn't getting in so much pain, 35 degrees really lends itself well to walking effortlessly. It helps us extend our hip and fully push off at the end of our uh, gait cycle. So I can't give you a number. I can't say this is what you need to do. You need to evaluate your needs and then take that and turn it into training. Use your training to support what training is for. Now, I got kind of sidetracked there. So stiffness in the back of the hip. Basically, if we think there are ligaments on the front of the hip and on the back of the hip, okay, like this. I'm gonna kind of tilt so you can see both. Back of the hip, my thumb, front of the hip, my fingers. If the hip is internally rotated, the thumb gets longer, the fingers get shorter. If the hip is externally rotated, the opposite happens. And so the thumb now is shortening and the fingers here, the front of the hip is lengthening. So what you'll notice is people with tight posterior hip capsules. Maybe their pelvis is in a good position to allow motion. Everything looks really, really good. They have all, you know, no other mobility restrictions, but they still have a restriction in hip internal rotation. Then perhaps they have stiffness in their posterior capsule of their hip. And so what you need to do then is you need to teach them how to maintain that good position, but also how to feel a stretch in the back of the hip. It may be on one side, it may be on both sides. You'll have to use your best judgment. You'll have to use your measurements. How much hip internal rotation do we need to decide what you need to do there? Um, and I always like to take it back to what am I seeing? Because as a personal trainer, as a strength coach, we are not set up well to do many orthopedic tests and I, I, it's very frowned upon and I don't really recommend most people do that. All I do is I do this as a, um, as a measurement tool sometimes and as a teaching tool most of the time. So I can take a squat and I can say, that looks different. You definitely got lower. You may have only gotten an inch lower, but those details matter, so you need to tune your eye to notice the details. Um, stiffness, back of the hip, 
roundabout, we're gonna finish this. So if I am externally rotated, which we said we probably are, if I am externally rotated, the back of the hip shortens and it needs to learn how to lengthen. So after repositioning the hip, I might still have shortening in the back of the hip. I might still need some elongation or some stretching of those back of the hip structures. Now, generally, if you need internal rotation, a bad way to do it is to internally rotate your leg. You need to make sure you have the position. You can't have this clunky feeling like you're just pushing yourself into bone. If you have any pain, don't do it, right? We don't wanna make people have pain. Instead, we want to mimic some sort of hip motion, thorax motion that will allow us to unlock these things. So generally what I'm doing is I'm having people maybe set up on a bench. I don't know how much you're gonna be able to see. Yeah, this is okay. Maybe we set up on a bench and I try to raise the left knee if my left posterior capsule is tight. I try to raise the left knee above the right knee by scooting the right foot out and letting the right hip drop down. Okay, so we have this, if you're, like if you're looking at me this way, okay, my left hip has to be higher than my right one. Okay, and that tells me that I'm internally rotating into the left, externally rotating out of the right. Into the left, out of the right. Okay, so I hope that rotation makes sense to you. I hope internal rotation now makes a little bit more sense to you. Don't go around, don't do a bunch of orthopedic tests. You don't have to. You can if you want to. I think it's helpful to learn. I really um, appreciated kind of familiarizing myself with the help of some of my mentors uh, as I was growing up. Um, I found that a helpful learning tool. So give it a shot if you want, but on the floor, remember, it's fast paced. We've only got hopefully an hour, maybe half an hour. Uh, and we need to, you know, get focused on stuff. So look at the squat, see if there's compensation, see if the knees are trying to fall out. And if they can't squat with their feet narrow, maybe force them to do it. Maybe make them hold something between their knees so that they cannot let their knees fall out. That's a very goal oriented task, right? And it can be very effective for not only lengthening the posterior capsule like we talked about at the end, but especially for repositioning the hips and for teaching them how to maintain the intra-abdominal pressure that they have while they squat. Hope that was helpful. If you have any more questions, any more advice, let's start a discussion below. Just leave a comment.